this has been an excellent discussion. And uh, before we end, I'd like to ask each of the panelists for a pearl, for any additional insight regarding their expectations for the future management of advanced melanoma. Uh, Dr. Robert Anbaka. Yeah, I think that uh, for us, all of us who treat melanoma patients, I think the past 10 years have been a dramatic shift compared to what we had previously. I think that we have a lot more hope for our patients now. I still think we need to remember, though, that of patients with metastatic melanoma, over half of the patients still succumb to this disease. I think we have a lot more work that still needs to be done. And also, I think that when I talk to my patients, I said there are four things that we want to accomplish with the therapy that we choose for our patients. We want to find the best patient for our pa best treatment for our patient. We want to find a treatment that actually gives them cure. We want the melanoma to go away and never come back. We also want to do this with the least amount of side effects for the patients. And I think most importantly, since we aren't uh, have treatments yet that works for everyone, not to burn any bridges down the line. I think that's something that also we I encourage my colleagues in the community as well to think about that you don't burn bridges down the line for our patients. Um, I think the next uh, five to ten years I think we'll, we'll see further dramatic shifts. And I think we are finally getting to the point that we may potentially talk about long-term durable responses and potentially cures for patients with melanoma. Okay, Dr. Mike Davis. So just to focus on a, uh, an area that I have particular interest in that maybe not be something that everyone's so aware of, we, we touched briefly upon the concept of neoadjuvant therapy for patients with high-risk regional disease. Again, I think we've made tremendous progress for patients with stage 4 disease, and I think in the next few years we'll get the readout from adjuvant trials that are likely going to change the standard of care for adjuvant therapy as well. I think there's a new opportunity of a potentially a new paradigm for neoadjuvant therapy, which is standard of care in several other diseases, not only because of its efficacy, but also because it actually gives you a rational way to guide what you should use in the adjuvant setting. And I think that with the new agents we have, we have new opportunities with initial trials showing very promising results. And so I would think that in the future, we may have a paradigm shift in those patients to neoadjuvant approaches. Okay, Dr. Georgina Long. My, I agree with exactly what Robert and Mike have said. So to add a new pearl, I would like to emphasize that um, yes, 50% of patients are not doing well. We've still got a lot more work to do. And patients really should be considered for clinical trials. I think that's critical. The neoadjuvant platform is also a wonderful platform to explore doublets and triplets very quickly. Um, and patients need to be managed in a multidisciplinary team setting as things get complicated and although the drugs seemingly are very easy to give and there are long-term survivors, I still think those patients should be uh, managed in a multidisciplinary team uh, setting so that if things get complicated they're in the right place and also they have access to clinical trials because we need to push the field forward. We're going for cure. Okay, Dr. Jason Luke. Uh, well, and I think I'm in a position of sort of seconding what, what all my colleagues said, but to, to hit on the quickly on the points is that I, I, I think it actually, maybe now more than ever, we need patients to participate in clinical trials. We have so many hypotheses that make a lot of sense that could really advance the field rapidly as long as we continue to accrue to these trials. Uh, so I, I really can't stress that enough, but then dovetailing with that is it's not just patients who have metastatic disease. So absolutely patients who have, ad, uh, ad, who have high risk disease and even patients in the potentially in the neoadjuvant setting, it's coming to the community through the cooperative groups very soon. This is not pie in the sky. We really need to be able to reach out and get patients from all stripes uh, to be able to participate. Great. And Jeff, can I add one point to that of also? Course. I think that it really brings to Jason's point here. I think that one thing that we haven't focused on uh, as much about at this um, session here is that really the question of prevention and sort of preventing patients from developing melanoma in the first place and early detection. I think that's also a field that we really need to, as, medical, as melanoma um, uh, experts, we need to really push forward as well and really emphasize that that's really ultimately how we um, prevent patients from developing stage four disease. Yeah, well, I, I, I would certainly agree with you. And a wise man who is actually a surgeon, who is a, uh, one of my mentors, once said the best way to deal with cancer is not to get it in the first place. So. I think uh, on behalf of our panel, uh, uh, we thank you for joining us and hope that you found this peer exchange useful and informative. Thank you very much.